<laughs> okay. Welcome. Detox and purification. This has been a popular workshop over the years as well. So thank you guys for taking the time out of your busy lives to attend. And we're going to go through some things that you can apply some of it. You can apply a little bit. You can apply a lot. You can kind of take it at your own stride. So some of the things that we go through it, you're going to feel like maybe this is talking directly to me and some of it you can maybe set aside or um, you know go after it in the future as well okay Let's see if I got my little pointer working here so detoxing and purifying the body it's always a two-prong approach okay first of all stopping the pollution from coming into the body and then doing things to release or get rid of those those pollutants or those toxins. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's that's gonna be one of the, the underlying things that we come back to as we're going along here. So stopping the pollution and then doing certain things to, to get rid of it along the way as well. Okay, so why do we want to discuss this? Well, as we've talked about in a couple of workshops already, you know, our diet, the human diet, what we are consuming as humans has changed more in the last 30 years than in the previous 30,000 years before that. Okay, and that's because of the pesticides, the preservatives, the sweeteners, all these different things that we're using to make food, to make it last longer, to make it taste better, to make it cheaper to produce, all these things that we're taking into the human body that were never ever meant to be there, okay? United States is one of the only nations in the world that allows genetically modified fruits and vegetables and cloned meat to be produced and sold. Many, many countries don't even allow any of that. So when it says organic on our packaging, you know, we pay a little bit of a premium for that. And they have to go through a lot of rigorous things to actually have it say organic. But in most other countries, they don't have to say anything like that because it is organic. You know, it's one of my favorite little Facebook memes of all time is, enjoy food or enjoy organic food. Or as your grandmother called it, food, you know. So we shouldn't even have to call it that, you know. We sh that should never even exist. Okay, so the internal environment, and so why are we discussing this? The internal environment of a person, you know, is the vast majority, is considered to be extremely toxic. Okay? And unless we're taking action every single day to detoxify and cleanse the body, you know, a lot of that will build up with time. Okay. All right. And looking at it from a clinical point of view, if you've got a patient and they've got chronic non-resolving conditions, they're considered to be toxic and something that needs to be addressed. This could be arthritis. This could be um, internal organ system dysfunction as well. Because your body is designed to heal itself, right? You don't have to think about healing a cut on your finger. The body is designed to heal itself. So if your body is not able to do that, there's something interfering with that process. And in some cases, it's going to be the toxicity levels in the body. Not all cases, but it's something that it at least needs to be looked at. Okay? All right. So we've, we hear a lot of different terms being thrown around, okay? Um, so like detoxification, people doing a cleanse, we've all heard of people doing that, and fasting. So what's the difference between all of them? Well, what is fasting? Fasting is not eating. There's, you know, they, there's such things as they say like a juice fast or something like that, but that's actually a, a diet consumed of, of juice. Actually doing a true fast is basically water, and that's it. Okay. Like Jesus, 40 days. You know, you want a clear mind? 40 days in the desert. The angels will come and attend you. Yeah, they will find me in the desert. <laughs> okay, but that's what a, a fast is. And there's different types of fasting to do. Um, intermittent fasting, some people will do. Uh, like the 24-hour fasting, sometimes people will do. Um, like I know for a long time I would do I would have my last meal on a Sunday at lunch, and then I won't eat again until Monday at lunch. 
So like a, a, it's a day of fasting, but it's not really me trying to struggle through a day of adjusting with no nutrients in my body, something like that. Okay, so it's a very short fast. Some people do it for long, long periods of time as well. And in my experience, you know, this is going to be mostly a, like a spiritual sort of endeavor, you know, more of like a higher level. There's, there's not, and that's going to have a benefit of its, its own. But just cutting off your nutrients completely, the body needs nutrients, right? A cleanse is generally done in a, a dietary way, okay? So I've heard of all, all different types of cleanses. I remember one of my chiropractic friends in Australia, he used to do a cleanse. One week, he would take water and he would mix in maple syrup and cayenne pepper. And he had a gallon of this that he took around with him everywhere and that's all he had for one week. And I forget he had some name for it, but that, that was his cleanse. And lemon juice, I think he had lemon juice in there too, you know, it flavored up a little bit. So, it's a little bit extreme, right? But for him, that's something that he kind of developed for whatever reason over the years. He tried it. It worked for him. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about some different cleanses in a while here, but cleansing is, is generally thought of to be as like a dietary thing. Okay. At least in my mind. And detoxing, it, it includes cleansing because you can do, you know, if you're uh, cleansing, you are detoxing. But it also includes other activities that you can do in your daily life other than just cleaning up your diet or, or eliminating certain things. And we're going to talk about that too. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, this is all in the notes so you guys can refer back to this. Anyone who happens to be watching online, you can just email our office and we can send you the, the PDF straight away. Okay. So just a few fun facts here. And again, this is in the notes. What foods are causing the most allergic reactions? You know, how many kids when you were in elementary school had peanut allergies? Mm -hmm. Or any dietary allergy? Yeah. Pretty much unheard of, right? Yeah. And what is it these days? You can't even have peanut M&Ms on the plane, right? Mm -hmm. That's because there's a lot of different theories and things behind that, but a lot of that has to do with how uh, vaccines are produced. And that changes people's uh, ability to, to basically adapt to certain proteins and things. Okay, but the most allergic reactions, milk. And of course, like we talked about last time, 70% of the nation's antibiotics are used in our livestock. And if you think that's not getting into you, it, it is. Okay, eggs, peanuts, wheat, soy, and tree nuts. Okay. Also, you know, something to note, when, when we are toxic, let's just say that we have a, a toxic environment, the thyroid is the most environmentally sensitive gland. So that means the more toxins that you have, the, the more decreased thyroid function you're going to have. Okay, so if anyone's having thyroid issues, this is a, a, absolutely a major point to look at, okay? And this video might even be something that you could point in someone in the direction of later, okay? So we already said, you know, most of the antibiotics that we use are used on livestock as well as humans, right? Okay, and then as we keep, continue to use antibiotics, only the strong survive. You guys have heard that before, you know, as far as bacteria creating superbugs, right? Like the, the weak ones die off and then the ones that reproduce are the ones that are stronger and stronger and more antibiotic resistant, okay? All right, and we talked about genetically modified foods already. This is going to become more and more of a major thing. You know, it's just a matter of time before the scales really tip. There's just so much money in producing, um, in producing these pesticides and producing all the, the plants and, you know, the genetically modified everything. There's so much money behind it, and there's so much... Um, sway in the government and the agencies, if you will, that it's almost like, yeah, we, we intuitively know and logically know that this is not good for us to be putting in the body. But it's easy to turn a blind eye when you have a stack of $100 bills this high and be like, you know what, how bad can it really be? You know, that's my little two cents on it anyway. But I think it's just a matter of time before 
the United States, you know, starts following suit with what the rest of the world is. You know, you go to France or something like that, or Germany, you won't find any of this. And when they hear about us and how much medication and stuff and what our food sources are, they're just like, this isn't even food, you know. So anyway, not that they got it all figured out or anything like that. The United States is still the best country in the world. <laughs> all right. So some benefits of, you know, doing a cleanse or doing a detox. One of the main things that almost everybody's going to notice is weight loss. Okay. Weight loss, like we talked about last time, right? We talked about maintaining a healthy weight, not just losing weight. And what's your purpose behind that? You know, because you can stop eating altogether and you can be pretty thin in no time, right? So whenever we're talking about this, it has to be done in a in healthy way, in a balanced way. And what are your true goals behind it, you know? But if you're, you're going to find that if you change up your diet and you pull out all the junk, basically, even if it's for one week, and you don't put any of that into your body, that's going to be something that happens straight away. And then the body says, here's our chance. Let's start getting rid of everything. That's really, you know, your body's intelligent, and that's what happens. Increased energy is huge. Okay, so if you're feeling like you're having chronic fatigue, you don't want to get out of bed in the morning, your energy is pretty low, you can't stay awake, you know, past 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, you know, the chances are that your body is really trying to process, process and get rid of things, okay? So increased energy is a, also a, a, it's a, a benefit that's almost 100% going to be there, okay? Increased cognitive function, focus and clarity, you know, and that's something that I think we all could use. Okay, and you can see that it's kind of the same thread runs through all of this, right? Better, deeper sleep, improved health and vitality, resolution of conditions. You know, there's a lot, especially, you know, there's things like digestive disorders and skin conditions. A lot of this is the body trying to, you know, get rid of these toxins. But like we said, if the toxins are continually flowing in, the body's always trying to keep up, right? Because your body is detoxifying. You know, certain organ systems, that's what their main job is. But if the pollution never stops, then the body never has a chance to get ahead. So all of a sudden, you stop the pollution, and you're doing other things to release the pollution, you, you will see a lot quicker resolution of condition. Okay? And then, usually once a person goes through this, and they're like, okay, I got through the first two days, which are usually the hardest, and then they make it through like, you know, that wasn't really that bad. A lot of times they're going to have some changes in, in their overall habits, right? Because diets just don't work. You don't just go on a crash diet, lose some weight, and then go back to everything you're doing before. Because what's going to happen is you're going to end up right where you were before. Changes have to be lifestyle changes. They, and it has to come from a good reason. You have to have a reason, the right reason inside yourself to make these changes that won't stick. But the nice thing about this is after working through it, you've already been through it and you've felt the benefits. And you're like, you know what? I really don't feel like going back to doing that or having that in my diet. You know, it's been probably since college that I've like popped open a can of soda and just like drank soda. And it's just like, I remember, you know, like I used to always go through the grocery store and, and get some, some Sprite. I just like Sprite for whatever reason and uh, get that in the grocery cart. And it just, all of a sudden just tasted like sugar syrup to me one day. And just like, no, I just can't do it anymore. I can't just pop open a can of soda and drink it. But that's just me in one example. You know, there's other, other examples. Everyone's a unique individual. Okay, so now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and just talk about simple ways, just a couple of ideas, and there's more than just this, but simple ways that you can detox on a daily basis, okay? Breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. So every time you're exhaling, you're getting rid of toxins, right? That's the body getting rid of carbon dioxide and other things. So what's diaphragmatic breathing? It's breathing using your diaphragm. So let's all just try this for a second because you need to sit up straight. If you're gonna take a full breath, the posture has to be strong. You cannot take a full breath if your posture is forward or flexed forward. 
Okay, so when you breathe, and you can close your eyes if you want to, but when you breathe in, you should be feeling the diaphragm come down and the belly should come out a little bit. Should, you know, if you're using what they call accessory muscles to breathe, you know, then the, the shoulder's trying to pull away and that, you know, it's trying to expand the lung fields a little bit more. But you should be doing it most from, from uh, the diaphragm, okay? So just take a couple of breaths like that. You know, just let the posture nice and straight. Ears should be right above the shoulder. As you breathe in, you'll feel the stomach come out. And then as you breathe out, it comes back in, right? So very important thing, you know, and this is a, a great um, just mental de-stressor during the day too. If you ever find yourself in like the, like the red zone, you know, like all of a sudden the dial's starting to go like this for the stress, this is a good thing to do. Walk away from your desk or walk away from your project. Hopefully not your spouse, but um, it's, a, it's a good thing to, uh, you know, just to release and, and kind of reset the mind as well. Okay. Water. How are you going to flush things out of the body if you are not hydrated? Okay, so we need to have good hydration every single day. How do you know if you're hydrated? I feel thirsty right now just talking about it. <laughs> We've talked about it quite a bit in the past. How do you know if you are hydrated if you had enough water? When you go to the bathroom, it should be pretty clear. That's really the easiest way. Okay? By lunchtime or so, it should be pretty clear. If it's 5 p.m. and it's not, you know you haven't hydrated yourself well enough. Um, if you're taking supplements like vitamin C and things like that, that's also going to discolor things. So you have to take that into account as well. Okay? Um, there is no rule of thumb for you. You are a unique individual. But guesstimation is about half of your ideal body weight uh, in fluid ounces per day. Okay. Exercise and movement. Okay, this is going to be moving toxins out of the out of the tissue cells as well. Stretching, same sort of thing, right? Because if we're, we've got these inflexible muscles and they're just not moving through their normal range of movement every single day, the leg only gets swung, you know, 20 degrees instead of 90 or beyond, things are going to be stuck in the fascia, things like that. So do, having a stretching routine is also going to be a good way to get rid of toxins. Sauna, steam room, this is something that I do almost every single day. Okay, that's just, it, it's also... Uh, like a brain detox for me. It's a place to sit quiet, drink some water, just be quiet 20, 30 minutes. You know, that's just something I found to do for me. Do all three of these at once, go to the hot yoga class, or all this whole list at once, right? And then simple techniques, mind and brain detox. You know, take a break from the news, the social media and the television. You know, that's I haven't had TV at my house since 2010, so that's nine years. And I miss watching the Brewers. Uh, that's pretty much about it. Otherwise, you just don't miss it, you know. I do have some Netflix, but it's like you don't, you can't just sit there and, and feed your brain that all the time, too, you know. This is our summertime, time to get outside for a walk, you know, to do some things outside, fresh air, breathe. Okay, so like we said, these are the simple techniques just for for detoxing. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna switch over to the handout. Because a lot of people ask like, what's the best way to detox? What, what should I be doing? And the answer is, I'm not going to tell you exactly what you should be doing because that's not my job. My job is to help you think about your health in different ways, think about your own body in a new way understand things more, and then apply these concepts in a way that works the best for you. And as always, if you miss a day or you, you skip a day or something happens, you don't just throw the whole thing down the tank. You know, it's, it's okay to pick yourself back up and start it up again, okay? But this is just an example, right? So the one-week standard detox. 
keeping a symptom log. So if you're having chronic conditions or something's going on, maybe that's your driving force behind doing the detox in the first place. Keeping a symptom log is a big thing, especially if a person's having dietary things going on. Oftentimes they'll be able to, you know, write down the time of day or what, what they ate and the symptoms, what time of day. And if it's related to something dietary, they'll be able to draw a line straight across. Like every time I have a Coca-Cola, one hour later I have a migraine headache or something like that. Okay? Not always, but quite often that's the case. All right? Weighing yourself daily, you know, that's not a necessity, but it's something that if you're doing it under, you know, provider supervision, you don't want to be just having your weight just drastically drop. So it's just something to, to, to keep a record of as well. And then, you know, always let your doctor know if you have any problems. Okay. So generally, again, this is just an example. Unlimited amounts of fruits and vegetables. And this should be the majority of your dietary intake. Okay. You can have proteins in the form of uh, lean white meats, clean meats, okay, nuts. And you can have whole grain unprocessed carbs. Okay. Only organic Nothing processed, only unprocessed. And then water, like we talked about, drinking half of your weight in ounces a day. Just a general rule of thumb. Okay, so how does that sound? Does that sound like fun? Okay, so here is, it says, this is the big part of it, the second half of this list. All the stuff you're not going to be putting inside of you. And we don't need to go through the whole list, but absolutely no. Candy, pretzels, donuts, burgers, sausage, salami, french fries, fatty cuts of meat, canned anything, potato chips, cookies, Danish hot dogs, bacon, bologna, onion rings. I guess I am going through the whole list. White bread, frozen, frozen anything, right? Crackers, cake, pizza, wings, pepperoni, ice cream, fried chicken, white pasta, and we Wisconsinites, our favorite, cheese, right? Okay, and then no... Like we said, no soda, no alcohol, and coffee, which is a main thing. Sometimes with a lot of people, that's a, almost impossible for them to give up. Okay? <laughs> Somebody said to me today that they drink 10 cups of coffee before 7 o'clock in the morning, which I said, that sounds like a lot of coffee. I don't really drink coffee. It's very, very rare that I do. <laughs> you feel better about it now? You feel better about him. Okay. But... If, if a person is like a mandatory coffee person and you're just going to be having a sledgehammer of a head all day, um, usually if you just have a half a cup of coffee, like first thing in the morning, that's going to be enough to, to set those receptors aside that it's not going to initiate that whole response. But that can be an issue with people. And tea is the same? Yeah. Is that because of the caffeine? Yeah. So if it's herbal teas... It's okay. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Again, this is just an example. Mm -hmm. This is what I found to be a kind of an easy way, an easy thing for a person to start with. You can get as extreme as you want, like we said, right? Get some maple syrup, some cayenne pepper and lemon, and add it to a gallon of water. There's your detox for a week. You know, like we said, that can be extreme. Okay. And then you see there's just an example here. You can go through that. Okay, and we talked about the benefits. That must have just been a little bit out of order on this handout. Okay, there's more intensive detox, which I'm not going to get into that. That's more done in like a clinical setting if a person's having, you know, a lot of really chronic issues. It's done mostly with only green vegetables and a medical food, which is something that's designed to basically, it's a shake that you take and it has to be um, through a provider that you get it can't just buy that in the store but it's pr supposedly uh, giving you all the nutrients that you need and that's all you have unlimited quantities of all of that and I actually have done that personally and that is a not fun week to go through I picked Thanksgiving week to do that that one time so remember when you tried to talk about clinic into doing it with you <laughs> I don't think that went over did it <laughs> did you have a question so these absolute no's yeah. is just if you're detoxing and then you start adding them back in, 
to see how they affect you. Exactly. And that's, that's the key. After you finish doing the detoxification, you don't just say, okay, everything back in the way it was before. If you're having any chronic issues, especially. So if you want to add one thing back in, it's like you know how it's going to affect you. That's, that's a good thing is that once you get it out of you and then you just add Doritos, let's say Cool Ranch Doritos is your thing for whatever reason. You add that back and you can, you'll pay a lot closer attention to how you feel after, after having that. So if there's one thing specifically that might be affecting you as far as a condition, it's a lot easier to, to pinpoint it if you're just adding things back one at a time. Does that make sense? Okay. Good question. Okay. So, five things. What did we learn tonight? <laughs>